Hey YouTube, I am back with an updated look at On One Software's Photo Raw 2017 pre-release. This video is going to be looking at the December 5th build, which addressed several issues, including a few that I raised in my first video. So I want to you know, start by recognizing that On One did a great job in getting a much better build out in a fairly short time frame. So, you know, props on that. Um, before I actually dive into some of the things that have changed, I wanted to address a couple of comments from the previous video. So when you do a review or offer any sort of opinion on the internet, you often get people who are offended that you have a different perspective than they do and um, you know, just can't imagine that you think differently. So there were some commenters who said, you know, why are you doing this? What are you doing reviewing a pre-release like it's a final product? Uh, don't you know it isn't finished? They're going to fix everything, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to start by saying, yes, I do realize that this is a pre-release version, and I mentioned that in the previous video, and yes, I know that it's not finished. Um, you know, I am an engineer in my day job. I've actually worked on and managed software projects, so I do know something about how the process works, and I have a lot of sympathy for what these guys are going through at the moment. But at the same time, my professional opinion is that this software has a long way to go before it's really ready to be released. And I know that they've said they're going to fix all of the known bugs um, and unknown bugs before the release date. But, you know, I, I'm telling you that's really not realistic. Um, there are over almost 100 items on the known list uh, and we're, you know, two weeks from release. So I know they're going to work as hard as they can. I know they're going to do their best to get a good quality product out the door. But assuming that they're going to get everything fixed is probably not realistic. Um, but I'd rather spend most of this video talking about some of the, the things that they've actually done because I think that it's it's pretty impressive. And I'd like to start by um, admitting that I may not know, this this may have been in the last build and I just didn't know how to use it. But um, if you drop your folders up into index folders, you can actually use this nifty little show subfolder contents down here um, to give you a recursive look at all of the files in all of the folders underneath you. And that's really quite excellent. That addresses one of the big workflow concerns that I had um, you know, with the previous release. Now, from my perspective, one of the biggest updates and improvements in this build is the fact that um, now DNG files, if you open them in develop module, actually open in 16-bit mode, which means that those of us who converted our entire catalogs over can um, actually see what photo raw is capable of and that's that's pretty excellent um, I'm gonna jump out because I've, I've pulled a few images out uh, explicitly for this video to highlight some of the features that I like and some of the things I'm a little bit concerned about so one of the first things that I really do like is that you know in general I feel like the program is pretty responsive it's not quite the lightning fast response that on one you know is trying to sell but I do think it's pretty good, um, particularly once you have images open. I think that the sliders respond quickly and, um, and do a good job. Um, one of the things I've been really impressed with in the develop module is the shadow slider, which I think does a great job of actually bringing out uh, shadow detail much better than Lightroom and, and Adobe Camera Raw. Um, I think it's really one of the highlights that I've enjoyed the most in in terms of actually messing with these images at the moment. Um, that being said, um, I cannot say the same thing in the highlight tool. And um, I, I wanna show you what I mean by doing a comparison with Lightroom. So these images have been sort of similarly processed up to this point. And um, one of the things you'll notice is that I actually don't think in its default state that Camera Raw does quite as good in terms of highlight recovery as Photo Raw does. Um, so there's less detail here in Lightroom than there is, I think, by default in Photo Raw. But um, when you bring the highlight sh uh, slider down, you get some of your detail back, and most importantly, you don't, in don't get any funky artifacts. But if we come over here to Photo Raw, what you see is that once you get past about 60, um, you start to get some pretty significant coloration and artifacts in the highlights. And that's fairly problematic. Now, I want to acknowledge that uh, On One has explicitly said that um, the fi final release will contain 
quote, improved shadows and highlight ranges. So, you know, I am not taking this to be the final state of the product, but I do think it's something that uh, obviously I'll be looking out for in the final release and something that hopefully is fully fixed by that time. Um, moving on, I want to highlight a couple of differences between Lightroom and uh, Photo Raw that you know, are, are things that you might want to look out for if you're switching. Um, the first is actually the way that the sliders themselves behave. So, you know, if you are familiar with um, Adobe, you'll know that the sliders go from minus 100 to plus 100, and they move in increments of one all the way across the, the spectrum. It's a completely linear scale. That is not how Photo Raw works, and that's not a problem. It's just something, again, to be aware of. So if you're starting at zero, you actually do move in increments of one up to 20. And once you hit 20, you start moving in increments of two until you get to 50, and then move in increments of five. So the further out you are on the slider, the more you're actually adjusting things. Um, you, you lose a little bit of control as you go farther and farther out so it's again not a huge deal it's a personal preference thing um, but it is something to be aware of another issue to be aware of is the way that the two programs reference color temperature is different when you're using raw files um, adobe obviously uses a hard reference to you know for instance 3400 kelvin um, photo raw will start you off at zero and then let you kind of go up and down from there based on where you shot uh, the file. So um, I don't think that's a huge problem. The only thing I can possibly see becoming an issue would be if um, you know you were way off in, fo in Photo Raw and needed more range than it was going to give you. But you know until that happens, I'm not terribly concerned about it. Um, one thing that I have noticed that I do want to point out, and this I think goes back to the highlight artifact issue is I actually have seen some visual artifacts in high contrast areas of images, including this one. So what I've done is I've actually got two JPEGs um, that are brought up. Uh, one of these was, this one was processed in Lightroom and the other one was processed in Photo Raw. And what you see are some pretty high contrast areas of this image. So you've got red and white and, you know, kind of some brightness and then fading into dark. You also have these lights up here. Um, when you move over to the Photo Raw export, and these are both done sRGB at 100 quality in JPEG, you see a lot of bleed over in this area, a lot of gray, some artifacts there, and you see some pretty uh, significant halos around the lights. You can also see it over in this section where this is red and white. You actually have red and gray. Um, and again, you have some pretty significant halos. Again, I want to explicitly say I recognize that this is something that's probably going to change before the final release, but it is something to certainly be aware of um, as an, an issue to watch when you're evaluating the final product. This is probably something that is not um, a gigantic issue. Uh, if you're printing for screen resolution or something like that. But if you're wanting to stick something on a wall at 20 by 30, that's going to be a much bigger problem, and I'd, I'd certainly watch out for that. Another image quality issue that I've noticed is um, in looking at the JPEG output. So this is the same image. I've exported it from Lightroom in this case, and Photo Raw I used... Um, a setting of 80 quality on both of them. And I'm not sure that you're gonna be able to see this in the video because of the way that um, videos get compressed. But if you're looking at Lightroom, you actually see a really smooth gradient across the sky. If you flip over to Photo Raw's output, what you can see are actually these small eight by eight blocks. And what those are is um, a function of the way that JPEGs are compressed. You actually break the image down into eight by eight blocks and then perform a discrete cosine transform on them and do some other stuff. Um, so what you're seeing here is actually the blocks that are used um, for the discrete cosine transform. 
This is something that doesn't concern me too much because I don't think it's going to be that hard to fix. But again, it is something that I would watch out for um, if if you're evaluating the final product or um, if you're looking for you know, kind of image quality issues that might show up. So um, the last thing that I want to do is highlight what I, I think is a, an ongoing um, performance issue possibly. And that is uh, looking at some um, very large stitched raw files. So these are DNGs that have come out of Lightroom and um, I'm just gonna kind of go in and I don't actually know what's in here so I'll pick one at random. Uh, this is a 570 megabyte file. I don't think I've opened it before and we'll just watch how it goes. So I'm gonna click on develop, I'm going to let it open, which will take a little bit, and I'm going to give you kind of some final uh, thoughts and impressions about playing around with this. So here goes. Um, final impressions. Overall, I've really enjoyed playing around with Photo Raw in the past day, and I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, there are some things that I really do like better than Lightroom, and you know, while I think that the end result of the images I'm getting out of Photo Raw is different, I think both of these programs are capable of producing some nice images. I think that On1 has some UI issues that they need to fix, some performance issues they need to fix, and some image quality issues they need to fix. But overall, for a first attempt, they've gotten a lot of stuff right. Um, at the same time, I do really have some significant concerns about image quality. My biggest concern is probably the artifacts that I showed you in that image of Charles Bridge, which I suspect is related to the highlight issues I showed on the picture of my dog. Um, it's really concerning because that's almost certainly hap something that's happening in the raw engine itself. And I can't be confident that when you fix it, you're going to be able to do that without causing some, you know, problems somewhere else. Now, I know that they're saying that the raw engine is going to be updated and, um, you know, that itself, in fact, gives me some concern because you've got really a core piece of the software that hasn't been finalized and this is supposed to be released in two weeks. I think the JPEG issue is a much more minor concern. Um, I think that's fixable, but I do think it's something to watch out for. And we're starting to load this in. Um, at the moment, um, I think the way that I would sum up, you know, looking at Photo Raw would be reflecting on some advice that I usually give people who are considering buying their first uh, camera. And what I usually will tell them is, you know, you're not just buying a camera, but you're buying into a system. And, you know, I think in a lot of ways that applies here. Um, the truth is I am heavily invested in Lightroom and its image processing right now. And I wish that they could get their act together and offer a more stable and faster product. And, you know, what I've seen on this pre-release does give me some hope that there's going to be a credible alternative. But it also makes me a little bit worried about, you know, some of the testing and quality control procedures um, at On1 worried enough that I'm probably not going to jump ship until I've seen some improvements and some long-term enhancement. Um, it's definitely a program that I'm probably going to continue to play around with, but I don't think it's one that I'm going to use um, for my important workflow, at least at the moment. I do think it's certainly capable of producing good results, but um, you know, I'm not sure at present that the performance benefit, if indeed there is one, is enough to justify switching for the kind of photography that I typically do. Um, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts, even if you want to tell me that I'm an idiot and wasting my time. So um, hope you've enjoyed this, and I certainly would uh, invite you to feel free to leave any comments and questions uh, below. Thanks.